All right, economic students. Um, I'm going to try and explain to you the oligopoly diagram. I know I tried to get through it in class, but again, this is one of those diagrams which you have to come back to and back to uh, until it sticks, right? It's not going to be one of the easiest to cover, but again, with practice, you can get it. So I'm going to take you through the basics of what I had to do in order to set this up. So again, I'm going to go to the easiest parts first and start with my axes. Let's add in my Y, sorry, my X. And this is my, my Y, I have revenue and costs. On my X, I have quantity. Let me label this oligopoly. In oligopoly, uh, we need to discuss specifically before we even get to join the diagram by uh, the theory of price rigidity. And this is more or less the fact that since firms in a oligopoly that operate in oligopoly markets are, are very mostly well mostly concerned with price, there isn't formally or informally level of price, well, informally or formally agreed level of price, uh, which they produce. And what we need to do is take this price out and essentially draw the demand diagram back from it. Okay, and I'm going to draw that down here. Again, uh, I'll leave out the MR curve for now because we need to add one more thing. Uh, I'm going to include in here I'm going to drop from this point down to get our quantity, right? Because above this price, you'll see that the demand curve is relatively elastic. That is because if an a firm operating in an oligopoly increases their price, they tend to lose a significant amount of customer. That's greater than proportionate to the change in price. I'm now going to add in my marginal revenue curve from here. Right, which stops just here. I'm going to label both of these correctly. This is, again, my demand curve here. My marginal revenue. Okay. But below this price, it's very important that you're aware of the fact that below this price, demand is inelastic, and I'm going to show you what that means. So I need to draw a very inelastic demand curve from this point. And you notice it's much steeper than the original, obviously, because this is inelastic. And that results in a further inelastic, a much more inelastic marginal revenue curve here. I'll label that. Demand, which we know is equal to average revenue. All right, so immediately, at first glance, this doesn't look very easy to understand, but I'm going to break down what's happening. All right, so what we see here by this demand curve on the top half, which it looks like, is elastic. Because if we have three firms, and I'm going to just write out three firms, firm A, B, and C, all right, we're going to say they all set a price for 100 pounds. Okay, so they agree at this level of price. They sell somewhat differentiated or potentially identical products, but they know for a fact that, say for example, firm C decides to increase their price to 150. All right, so C is going to increase their price. So I'm going to put a new symbol here, P C, so because that's C's price going up. If we see what happens here. Let me label these two. All right, so you see that change in price has led to a greater than proportionate change in quantity. Now, the reason for that being, if three of us are selling identical goods for the same price, and I increase my price, I'm going to lose a lot of customers because they're just going to go to B and A, right? Because C increased their price on the same product, everyone else is going to B and A to buy. 
And if you think about this in terms of uh, petroleum, countries that export petroleum, they export an identical product. So people are going to buy from where it's cheapest. Now, ultimately, if C raises their price to 150, everyone else will go to countries A and B. All right, so A and B are quite happy for you to do to take on any price increase because you'll be losing customers and they'll be getting them. So feel free to raise price. But since the three of us have agreed this price level, if a company like B comes along and says, you know what, I'm going to charge 60 and let's erase company C's. All right, so right now I have company B at 60 and A and C at 100 pounds each. Now they see what I'm up to. I've dropped my price down to 60. By dropping price by 60, what's going to happen? I'm not going to draw this in just yet. I need to explain something. By dropping my price to 60, all the customers are going to come to me. So rather than see a significant increase in the amount of customers and benefit from what you might imagine would happen, you also have to keep in mind these guys are going to react by seeing me drop to 60 and they're going to drop to 60. Right. They're immediately going to react because they don't want to lose customers, so they start dropping price. And we get into what's known as a price war, right? because we all start competing for those additional customers and start dropping our prices to catch up to one another. Right? That's the theory of the price war, how it's initiated. And that happens anywhere below this price level here. Right? Because above that, feel free to increase your prices because you're going to lose a lot of customers. Below this price, right? below this price if you're going to drop your price, then you're going to get everyone else. So rather than let you get everyone else, we're going to do the same thing. So you won't see that significant of an increase in customers if you decrease your price, because we, as in B, A, and C, are going to do the exact same thing. Right. Another thing to note, in this specific model, I'm going to use the blue curve. We need to draw in the marginal cost curve. Right. And excuse me for writing over the other notes. But you'll see that marginal cost equals marginal revenue at this discontinuous point, right, where this dotted line is. And I'll explain to you why this is here as well in a minute. So this is essentially where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. And you'll know even if our marginal cost goes up, it's still the same scenario, right? We're still operating, we're still producing at this level of output. Take it up from demand curve and then price is set there. Now you might be asking me why is this demand curve kinked, which is what's happening here. This is all the kink of the demand curve. Well, let me highlight for you something that's happening. So you see from this point, the demand curve is elastic. And from this point, it's inelastic. Since the kinked demand curve is the demand curve for firms and oligopoly markets, you have to remember there's going to be discontinuity here. And I'll highlight why, where. There's discontinuity at this line due to the fact that essentially this diagram consists of two demand curves. So this one, which would essentially continue this way, and this demand curve, which would essentially continue. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Like I'm just carrying this demand curve on down this way. So essentially what I'm doing, I should clean up this mess here. What I'm doing is extending two demand curves and showing you why there's discontinuity. Because at the point I've just mentioned where they, where we have the vertical, sorry, the, uh, yep, the vertical line, we don't know which demand curve we're following. So obviously there's a discontinuity. Uh, the reason for that is these two demand curves intersecting at this point. So we use our marginal revenue below here and marginal revenue above here as well. And we cross marginal cost across it. Between these two points, it's also very important to remember, between these two points, we can see any change in marginal cost, and that won't impact the price we're selling at. All right, so that's your explanation for oligopoly. The other two things to note here. Let's get a clean sheet. In oligopoly, price, as we saw, was greater than marginal cost, so that is not uh, achieving allocative efficiency. And we also know we're not operating 
at the lowest point, uh, sorry, the lowest part of the average total cost curve. So no, not achieving. All right, so we're not achieving either efficiency. And as you can imagine, in oligopoly, uh, generally they're not producing at the lowest point of the average cost curve. So they're not going to be achieving the efficiency, of, sorry, productive efficiency and price as we saw was clearly greater than the marginal cost curve. Sorry, marginal cost point where they, uh, the profit maximizing output lies. So they're not achieving allocative efficiency. If there's any part of this you didn't get, go back and review it. And I'm also going to attach a link to any additional videos I find helpful.